Teen Wolf. Warm-hearted fantasy movie starring Michael J. Fox as a teenage werewolf. Coming out in 1985, at that time when Fox had become a thing, thanks to Back to the Future and Family Ties. In Teen Wolf, Fox plays 17-year-old Scott Howard, who suffers from the pains of common teenage anxiety, such as not being popular, getting bullied and being ignored by his high school crush, and his inability to play basketball. But after Scott notices that he's going through weird physical changes, he quickly realises that his changes aren't that of normal puberty, as to his shock and horror, he becomes a werewolf. Scott doesn't want his high school peers to know about his strange werewolf transformations. But after he unleashes his inner wolf in a basketball game, he quickly proves that he now has a variety of superpowers, and is quite the basketball player. So before the town goes into a panic of hysteria, with scientists coming down to dissect him, Scott actually becomes the most popular guy in school and a local town celebrity. But the big question is, at what cost? And will Scott's newfound fame go to his head? In a movie that is, although silly and cheesy at first glance, actually has a lot of heart and enjoyment, and is an allegory of common teenage angst about finding one's place in the world and fitting in. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I really love this movie. I mean, come on, look. And although when most people talk about Michael J. Fox and 1985, they inevitably think of Back to the Future, I also say, what about Teen Wolf? Let's give that movie some love too. As to be honest, I love it as much as I do love Back to the Future. So to celebrate this 1980s treasure, Let's look into 10 things that you may not know about Teen Wolf. So, let's check it out. She's right, you are an animal. Ow! new wheels, we got some good tunes, and a total disregard for public safety. <laughs> You're right, okay, let's go. All right, so, so. Wait a minute. These waves are mine. If everybody had a nose. Number 10, The Unzipped Extra. Okay, many people know about this fact, as it's without a doubt one of the most famous movie bloopers of all time as the ending of the movie is somewhat overclouded by an extra whose fly is undone. What?! Yeah, there's a guy at the end. Go online, look it up. He's in the stands, way in the background, and he's totally got his dick out. The movie ends with a now non-wolfed-up Scott Howard winning a basketball game, where the movie ends with him celebrating his victory. But standing out like a sore thumb in the background is an extra who seems to be having a lot of issues with their fly, and after a struggle with the zipper for what feels like an eternity, the poor exposed extra finally got their zip up. The irony of this is that many people claim this extra is a man, but I swear to god if you look closely, you can see it's a woman. I guess there just wasn't enough time to reshoot the scene. Which leads me to my next point. Number 9. The film was a rush job. At the time of shooting Teen Wolf, Fox was a rising star thanks to his role as Alex Keating on Family Ties. And Fox agreed to star in the movie because Family Ties went into a six week break on the account that Fox's co-star Meredith Baxter was pregnant. So the film was very quickly shot within 21 days. And although I argue that Teen Wolf is a great movie, because of its haste in which it was made, there is the odd blooper and continuity issue here and there. For example, you can see dolly tracks in some of the scenes. In the scene where Styles is dancing on top of Scott Howard's van, you can see the van passing a jack-in-the-box. The same shot of the van passing a jack-in-the-box was used twice in the same scene. And even some of the basketball shots are reused in certain scenes. Oh well, doesn't take away from the enjoyment of the movie. Number 8. 
Teen Wolf isn't the first teenage werewolf movie. Yeah, as hard as it is to imagine, Teen Wolf is actually something of a remake. The first Teenage Werewolf movie was I Was a Teenage Werewolf, which came out in 1957, which had more of an emphasis on horror than Teen Wolf did. However, a few years before Teen Wolf, a movie called Full Moon High came out, which, like Teen Wolf, had more of an emphasis on comedy than horror. And like Teen Wolf, also had a sports movie feel about it. And even the wolf makeup looked kind of similar. But unlike Teen Wolf, Full Moon High has been largely forgotten. Number 7. Deleted Scenes The movie has a variety of deleted scenes, some of which can be seen in the movie's trailer. Like a now wolfed up and famous Scott Howard having a photo shoot with the cheerleaders of his basketball team. Yeah, by the way, did I mention that Scott's basketball team is called the Beavers? <laughs> yeah, that's awkward. Other deleted scenes include a scene where after Scott walks Booth home, he then gets chased by a heap of dogs in the neighbourhood, in a scene that is surprisingly kind of creepy and unnerving. We see Styles try to buy beer at a different liquor store other than the one with the creepy old man. There's a deleted scene where the theatre teacher, Mr Lolly, sees a picture of Scott as the werewolf and decides that he is perfect for the stage in a surprisingly long scene, which kind of slows everything down. But my favourite of the deleted scenes, and one that I wish they kept in, takes place after the school dance, where Scott denounces his inner werewolf to his father, and speaks about how he lost control when he lunged at the bully Mick, and how he felt like he could have killed him. It actually takes the movie out of the 80s cheese territory and makes it more of a serious movie with character drama and conflict. And it's good seeing Scott admit that his powers can be dangerous and must be contained. Which, in effect, is actually a really important moment in the movie. Also, back on the trailer, the Give Me a Keg scene is used to promote the movie. But the dubbing used for Scott's werewolf voice sounds totally different to what was actually used in the movie. I mean, let's just compare the two for a sec. Listen to how it sounds in the movie. Give me a keg of beer. And now listen to how it sounds in the trailer. Damn, I'm glad they fixed that up. Also, for a while on the interwebs, there have been rumours that the movie ended with a scene of Styles crashing his wolfmobile, where Scott then wolfs up and saves him. I don't know if this is true or if it's just popular rumour, but if it is true, I can see why it was deleted, as it goes against the realisation of Scott needing to be the wolf anymore. And also, another popular rumour is that the movie apparently started off with a disclaimer, similar to the one used at the start of Michael Jackson's Thriller, and that the production team were told to remove it or face legal repercussions. Jeez Louise. Once again, supposedly. And also in the script, when Scott is becoming famous, there was a scene where he guest stars on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, but the scene was never filmed. Number 6. The studio wanted Scott Howard to be more like Spricoli. In Teen Wolf, Scott Howard is seen as being something of an average normal guy. And thus, with the insistence of Michael J. Fox, the character was given an average normal wardrobe attire to reflect Scott's current state of mind in the world. However, the studio at one stage were against this, and wanted Scott Howard to be more like Sean Penn's character Spicoli, seen in Fast Times at Regimont High. Spicoli was something of an airhead surfer, stoner, 80s dude, with an eccentric, bright attire to go with his attitude. But thankfully, Fox stuck to his guns, and the character was left with a more normal wardrobe. However, several times in the movie, the character Styles, Scott's wheeler and dealer best friend, is seen wearing Hawaiian shirts, which actually do in fact resemble Spicoli. Which actually makes more sense when you think about it. I mean, yeah, make Styles the crazy stoner off the wall guy, but not Scott. Or how else will a broader audience be able to relate to him? 
Number five, James Hampton auditioned for the role of coach Bobby Finstock. One of the most memorable aspects of Teen Wolf is the father and son relationship between Scott and his father Harold Howard, played by James Hampton. Hampton played the part with so much empathy and kindness and warmth. He was like the ultimate father anyone would want to have. But in addition to that, he also had strength and acted as a mentor to Scott, warning him if he felt that he was taking his wolf shenanigans too far, almost making the Harold Howard character the Obi-Wan Kenobi of Team Wolf, if you will. Well, here's the thing. Hampton originally auditioned for the role of smooth-talking buffoon but still likeable Bobby Finstock, which would have been weird. But thankfully, he got the role of Harold instead. Fact of the matter is, I should be coming to you when I need money. Although, Hampton allegedly kept ripping off his wolf makeup after takes as he found it claustrophobic. And when the movie was shown to a test audience, the scene where Scott's dad is also revealed to be a werewolf left the audience laughing for minutes after the scene, making them miss out the following moments of dialogue. An explanation is probably long overdue. An explanation? Jesus Christ, Dad, an explanation? Look at me. Well, it's a funny reveal, that's for sure. Number four, the movie was thought to be a box office bomb. During the movie's later days of production, the production company Atlantic Entertainment Group went into a panic, fearing they had created a box office dud and couldn't anticipate Teen Wolf making much money. But to their shock and surprise, when the movie came out, it was number two in the box office, behind Michael J. Fox's other movie, Back to the Future which earned the movie an impressive $33 million. Even Fox was surprised by Teen Wolf's success, as he doesn't seem to like the movie, nor talk highly about it. In his book, Lucky Man, Fox speaks about how miserable being in the wolf makeup was and how he could only eat liquid foods. Well, Dad, it didn't pass me by. It landed on my face and how he just couldn't believe that the movie had reached number two at that time. You know what? Michael J. Fox, if you're watching this video, and damn it, I hope you are, it's okay. It is okay to be okay with Teen Wolf. I know it's not your most fondest role that you've ever done, but it has made me and many others very happy and has been an important part of our childhoods. So, that can't be a bad thing, right? It's time to give the movie the recognition it deserves. Number three, there was an animated series that was weird. Many people already know that Teen Wolf spawned a terrible sequel and a recent TV series which honestly looks more like a TV show about Twilight. But some people may not know that in 1986, Teen Wolf spawned an animated TV show. That was actually really strange, as it greatly deviated from the movie. For example, Scott never transforms publicly as the wolf, as he doesn't want people to know. James Hampton returns as Harold Howard, providing his voice, but Scott now also lives with his grandparents and annoying obnoxious little sister, all of whom are werewolves. The animation looks weird and is not drawn very well and the same transformation shot is constantly reused. And in the animated series, the character Scott is basically an unlikable doofus. And the town where Scott lives is no longer called Beacon Town and is now called Wolferton, a town of inhabitants who are obsessed with werewolves. So, Scott doesn't want the town to know he's a werewolf in a town that is fanatical about werewolves. Smart. Number two, the movie has many ties to Back to the Future. Yeah, the fact that the two movies came out round about the same time and both star Michael J. Fox as a high school teenager is instantly going to connect the two movies, but there are actually many more similarities. The character Scott Howard is basically the same as Marty McFly. In both performances, Fox delivers that likeable empathy that seems to always draw the viewer to his characters. 
Both characters fear their place in the universe, and both worry that they won't reach their full potential in life. Both characters express their fears of not achieving while strolling through their local town with their girlfriends. Both characters must face a largely built bully, along with an ill-tempered high school principal, and both have a mentor that tries to help them. And oddly, both movies have a scene where Fox gets set upon by sexually forceful teenage girls. And both Back to the Future and Teen Wolf explore father and son relationships. And in both movies, the bond between father and son have a deep message. In Back to the Future, the message is, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. And in Teen Wolf, it's with great power comes great responsibility. Just like Spider-Man, and yeah, more on that later. And both movies see the main character better themselves and overcoming their fears for experiencing strange happenings. In Teen Wolf's case, it's becoming a werewolf. In Back to the Future's case, it's time travel. Teen Wolf was meant to be released in 1984, but when the production company got wind that Fox was making a movie with Steven Spielberg and Robert Zemeckis about time travel called Back to the Future, they wisely chose to push back the release date till after Back to the Future's release. Which is why the movie's poster proudly proclaims in huge lettering, Michael J. Fox is back from the future in a new comedy. In fact, when the movie was released in Italy, in the re-dubbings, Scott's name was changed to Marty. And in Brazil, the movie was called The Boy from the Future. Of which, calling the movie that literally makes no sense. And the house that was used for Scott Howard's house was reused as Lorraine Baines' house in Back to the Future. In fact, while filming Teen Wolf, the Back to the Future team were scouting locations for Back to the Future, which at that time was starring Eric Stoltz as Marty McFly, which is how Michael J. Fox first got wind of the upcoming movie and felt that that was the kind of movie that he should be starring in. Because once again, for some reason, Fox really doesn't like Teen Wolf. Number one, Teen Wolf is a superhero movie. One of the complaints some people had about Teen Wolf at the time is that it wasn't like your usual teen comedy horror that was coming out at that time. Such as movies like Fright Night and A Nightmare on Elm Street. Nope, Teen Wolf was way more tame than those movies. In fact, the New York Times labelled the movie as quote, unquote, aggressively boring. But putting the whole werewolf aspect aside, the movie isn't really a horror nor does it have ties to the horror genre. It's more of a coming of age movie, and the werewolf is actually a metaphor for superpowers. After all, becoming a werewolf seems to give Scott superhuman strength and abilities. His father, Harold Howard, even tells him the famous Spider-Man lines of, with great power comes great responsibility. And one of the movie's script writers, Joseph Loeb, is even a comic book writer writing comics for characters such as Batman, Superman, Hulk, X-Men, and of course Spider-Man. And if you need any more proof that Teen Wolf is a superhero movie in disguise, just look at the movie's poster, where Scott is doing the famous Superman shirt ripping notion, and just like Superman, reveals a chest logo. But despite this, the movie's messages are about not using your abilities to impress others, but in fact to just be yourself and to be comfortable in your own skin, and that it's better for people to appreciate you for you, rather than it is appreciate you for having super abilities. And to me, that's where Teen Wolf's true heart lies, and why it's such a compelling movie. Well guys, that was my list of 10 things that you may not know about this crazy 80s nostalgia that is Teen Wolf. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't seen this movie, or haven't seen it in a long time, I say definitely check it out. View it with an open mind. Yeah, the movie might be silly at times, but it's got all that 1980s cheese that we all seem to love and be addicted to. And, as mentioned, it does have a lot of heart. Anyway, I'm Minty, and it didn't just pass me by, it landed on my face. See ya.